Hello everyone, welcome back to the CCO Follow podcast. Today, we're gonna be introducing the new uh, topic of this month, which is missions. We're gonna be talking all about missions, why uh, we wanna convey how important missions is, um, and how we as a, as a church and as a community can get involved and, and start really living out the call that, that Jesus has, has for us. Um, today we're, we're excited. Travis and I have Tom Alonji, who is an elder at our church. He's a pastor at our church. He's been here for how many years? Tw- 25 plus years? He kind of does quick it all. Math. Uh, quick, yeah. uh, quick math. And, and so, so Are you today, talking about how many years I've been on staff or how long I've come here? Well, how long have you come here? Yeah, that's interesting. Well, I was 15, so Whoa. I'm 53, so I don't know. Do the math. A long time. Yeah. 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 So today we're going to be talking mm. about uh, missions, but specifically what we should all be keeping in mind um, before, during, and, and after, I guess you could say, of living a life on mission, and that's prayer. So Travis, mm-hmm. you, you had a, a really good explanation of of what we kind of want to cover today in, in prayer. Yeah, so as we're kicking off this month of Living on Mission, uh, Pastor John taught this last Wednesday on the Great Commission, not the Great Suggestion, and the idea that, you know, Jesus hasn't just offered us like, hey, if you're interested, this is a cool thing to do, but it's like, you are, you are called, you are right. told, you are sent. And um, he says, you know, just as the Father sent me, now I send you, that we are sent on mission um, by Jesus to, to share his gospel, to share his good news, to, um, to tell the broken world of the healer. And so, um, you know, as we were talking about how we're going to kick off this podcast following, um, that mm-hmm. teaching from John, uh, you know, we were, um, looking at, well, what is the, what's the order of scripture? And so we have, um, that in the end of Matthew where he gives the great commission, but we see the beginning of acts, the very beginning of the church. Yeah. Um, they didn't just so- simply start preaching and going, um, but they started praying. And we look at Acts 1 and 2, and we see how much prayer is foundational in their immediate response to Jesus. Right. And I think sometimes our immediate response is, well, okay, I'll go tell my next door neighbor. I'll go tell the person I see every day. I'll go tell, I'll respond physically in this way, um, where the example we have in scripture is their immediate response was prayer. And so the the prayer of, um, you know, desiring to be changed by him, to be led by him, to be empowered by him, um, kind of all the things we'll be talking about today, but yeah. just this idea that our first response should be prayer. Well, and that's not any different, right, than anything we do in the Christian faith. Mm-hmm. Our, our first response in everything that we do should be prayer. Um, and I'm, I'm excited because we, we have Tom on, and we both had a conversation where like mm. who could we think of that that really encapsulates praying before something mm-hmm. got moving and we thought who has of, the weirdest stories of, of time yeah. I mean, pretty much that's what it is yeah, yeah. who has the, the maybe most i could share crazy a couple stories, weird stories. absolutely oh, yes. okay. so so actually tom i just want to get started in just your overall not necessarily coming to faith but coming to this conviction that you're to serve and go out and, and be missional minded and living a life like on active mission. Faith. Yeah. So a where, responsive faith. where, how did that start for you? Wow. Um, so I've been on staff here for 22 years probably. Wow. And a lot of the ministry of course is in the walls of Calvary. I was the children's pastor. So I was teaching kids, doing some counseling. Um, and I loved all of it. But there was just um, something missing in my life that I couldn't put my finger on for a long time. And so um, I remember I was in worship one day and I just had an unrest Hmm. and I couldn't figure it out. But I was like, something's missing. Everything's good Mm -hmm. with my family and my job. I mean, I love coming to work. I love going home. But I was that's where prayer started was I just simply said a quick prayer, like, God, what is it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, and he was quick to answer. And because it was during worship, I just couldn't even sing because I just, I was so bothered, but Mm -hmm. I couldn't, I couldn't identify it. And it was just a, a thought that he put in my head. And it was this, it was, so where are you with the lost? Hmm. And, it hit me and I was like, wow, all of the teaching that I do at the church is good. Mm -hmm. Um, my family is good. 
Mm-hmm. Everything, nothing was bad. Right. It was just something was missing. And so that sent me on a mission. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's good. Yeah. Because I, I was like, you always have to think about why Jesus came to this earth. And he was very clear. Mm-hmm. He came to seek and save the lost. Yeah. And as you know, we are his temple that he dwells in. Mm-hmm. It's not a building, it's our lives. And so we should be, uh, he should be, he, he still is about what he's always been about and that's yeah. seeking the lost, but he lives in us and he uses us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so if we're not on mission with his mission, um, I, I think that that's what creates that unrest Yeah, and he'll challenge us that in that area like he did me. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I, decided do you want me to go more yeah, into where yeah. what, yeah. what happened next okay yeah. so what yeah. happened next so it was shortly after that that some friends invited uh linda and i to a young life banquet and a lot of people know that i'm in a young life leader mm-hmm. and we uh went to it just to learn about it and as we were listening to just a local missions what's going on here in town with high school students mm-hmm. Linda and I were both there and just went, we get it, Lord. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. You're calling us outside of the church mm-hmm. walls, the building walls. And um, that's what started us on being on more on mission mm-hmm. with Jesus's heart to oh, seek yeah. and save the lost. And so that's kind of where it started. It was yeah. just a question I had for God, like, God, what, what's up? <laughs> yeah. I think it's important that like kind of mm-hmm. two things from your story is that, um, I mean, this happened when you were a pastor mm-hmm. and, you know, we know that, you know, being a pastor is not like the pinnacle of Christian, you right. know, everything, but sometimes people view that and just to kind of correct their view. It's like, no, you can even be a pastor and God still wants to do things in your heart and life. Like, and God will, will make you unsatisfied, dissatisfied with, yeah. with maybe where you're at in your walk with him and stuff like that. Right. Um, regardless of what you do for a profession, regardless of what your life is like at the moment, it wasn't like you're going through some disaster or crisis. It was when things were good, when God was like, Hey, I want to pull you deeper into this, this other thing I have for you. Um, the other thing I think that's really cool about your story is just how, um, God's timing worked. Right. Like, you know, he, um, for all, for all we know, there was other things that went along your path, like, oh, that could have been a cool opportunity. That could have been a cool opportunity. That could, but God put it on your heart and he spoke to you and essentially was like, I want to change this in your life at the time where you were going to go to do this thing. And now I've been doing that ever since and being really involved ever since. I think sometimes we, we want to rush change in our life and we're just like, oh, I want to be a better this, better that, um, or, or this, or whatever. And, um, you know, God, God has his timing of when he desires to show change yeah. in our life and his yeah. timing of like when he's like, okay, this is the next step for you. And this is the timing of when I want this next step for you. Right. And it's just, this one was like, we just got to be patient. And it was a stirring in my heart yeah. mm-hmm. that I didn't even know it was taking place yeah. that led to prayer. Yeah. And so I forgot to mention this important part because before those people invited us to this fundraiser for Young Life, I was sitting on our porch at home and I mean, I don't, I don't know if it was a vision, but it was certainly something God put in my mind. So maybe a vision. And I was sitting there and, and I pictured this glowing pumpkin field. Maybe it was close to fall. I don't know. These are weird stories. Was it Jeff Jeff Olmeyer's house? It was just, (laughs) no, it wasn't the Olmeyer's house. It it was just this glowing orange field. Hmm. It was just vibrant. And and it was like, Tom, do you see all those pumpkins out there? (laughs) And I was like, wow, it's just so vibrant. And and he he was like, Mm. what has to happen to those pumpkins? And what will happen to those pumpkins if they're not brought in? Mm-hmm. They're ready for harvest. Mm-hmm. and But it takes the laborers to go out and get them. And then that's when yeah. this all started. Because my answer to him was, well, they'll rot yeah. if no one goes and brings them yeah. in. Yeah. And I think there's so many people that are ready to hear the gospel. And they're ready to come in. But... It, like people are our biggest stewardship. Yeah. The people that God has around us yet 
for whatever reason, we don't take that step to build bridges into people's lives to, to be able to share with them. Yet those are the very people that he is the harvest field. Mm -hmm. And as we know, it says the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few and it takes courage, Mm -hmm. but that's why you're put on this earth. Yeah. And as a believer, totally to seek and save the lost is yeah. to be on mission with Jesus. Yeah. Well, I'm sure you could have quoted that verse prior to that moment, right? <laughs> but something changed when you had that experience yeah. and not always not saying it's always an emotional experience or a vision or anything like that, but there does have to be a change. There has to be a moment where it's like, you don't just simply, you can't just simply say the heart of God. You have to feel the heart of God. Yeah. You have to be transformed to be more like God in yeah. that way. And, and you know, it's, it's, I think about this because, you know, I know that you're a tennis coach. I know that you, so are you. Yeah. I am. And, <laughs> I feel um, so left out. <laughs> and, and you've, you've been, you've been involved with the community. You're like the person that I would go to like, like, Oh, like I need to know somebody who lives in Thurston <laughs> County. I'll go to Tom. He probably knows them. And probably. you do every time. So yeah, you should go into Fred Meyer. Yeah. I never get out of there. Yeah. So <laughs> you're, you're connected and God has you here and he's prepared you. And I just think of, of your story of just where you had that vision and you had this unrest and you, you just prayed, you just said, God, okay, what, what is it? What would you have for me? And he just told you plain and simple I want you on mission. And mm-hmm. then I don't know what it looked like between that moment in church to, you know, your young life going to young life, but mm-hmm. it's, it's cool to see. It's so apparent to me to see God's work and just bringing you along. And I mean, it was his timing. It was the right timing. I, yeah. you know, since I've, you know, reconnected with you after college, you know, you were in young life and you were doing all this great things and, <laughs> and people really, like I even see it with the, you know, the tennis parents is like people really look up to you and you have a very, it's not just because um, you're tall. No, it's not, it's not just because you're tall, but they look up to you and, and they see, I guess, good in you. They, and I think I attribute that they see Christ in you, but mm-hmm. it's his work allowing you to what you're saying, be the temple. Like you're a witness to so many people. And now that you have this mindset where it's like, I don't want those pumpkins to rot. Like mm-hmm. I, I gotta be a laborer. Like who, who else is going to do it? Mm-hmm. And so God is using you in that. I just think that's so, um, it's just so clear and the fruit is just right there. So I, I love that, that you have that story and I know you have so many more, <laughs> many um, more. And, and I'm curious as we're talking about praying and how God changes something in us, do you have any, any crazy story uh, where any. where you have have seen something that you've wanted change and you've you've just prayed for it and and what that prayer for it looks like and then what happened in the end result? I'm just curious if you have anything. So where I where I was praying about something, yeah, like you've you've yeah. something's something's wrong. I got to pray for it and then the result of God providing in that. I know you have a ton, so pick one. Um, well, that one that I just shared was huge in my life because it was a life changer on the direction Mm -hmm. of my life. Yeah. Um, the other things that you're talking about, um, you know, I've had some kind of interesting stories, but I don't know that they're what you're looking for. (laughs) They're just, (laughs) you're fishing Arthur. Yeah, I am. I'm fishing a little bit. (laughs) Yeah. So I, I guess I mean like how has God used you specifically in ways that you would have never imagined like with people meeting people or bringing people in or, or something like that you know what I mean like I think about okay. stories of like you at Fred Meyer and how that God just had put you there and used you and I don't know it might be easier if we just share stories that we know of Tom yeah, I, yeah, right. I, I get I'm, I'm thinking of well, the, yeah I, sometimes I don't I don't think you realize the impact that you're having because we go in and day in and day out in our routines. Yeah. And, you know, I've coached for 29 years. Um, yeah, I started when I was 12, so (laughs) no, uh, it's been a long time, but you know, year in and year out, you, you bond with certain kids. Mm -hmm. And, and I used to feel guilty because like I couldn't, you can't reach 50 kids yeah. all at once in the same way. But for some reason, every year, like you being one of them, yeah. you know, you were one of my, uh, my close kids. 
uh, when you were playing for Capital. And so I've just always been aware of that. Like I know when it's right and safe Mm -hmm. to share, not that you don't share when it's not safe, but I know I just, I guess I'm sensitive and, and see those opportunities and I pray for those opportunities. Mm -hmm. I, I remember years ago, this is probably 17 or 18 years ago. I was coaching a boy and uh, he went to the state tournament and we were at the motel and they had a hot tub and we were all going to go down there and sit in the hot tub. And, and he, he and I were the first ones there and I just said, Hey, how's school going? And you know, he, he knew me for a long time and Mm -hmm. he trusted me and I had a good relationship with his parents. And I, I just asked like, well, what are the kinds of things you're learning, you know, like in your science classes and like, what do you learn about life? And Mm -hmm. he said, well, I, uh, we're taught, you know, evolution and, and I, and he kind of told me a little bit about what he's learning in his classes and, and I listened to him and, cause I know what's being taught. Right. Mm-hmm. And, but I, after he was done sharing, I, I just offered him an alternative thought <laughs> about where he came from, mm-hmm. you know, and, and I knew I could talk to this kid and yeah. this was a kid that God put in my life. And I, I just looked at him and I said, have you considered, and I went through creation and and just how everything serves a purpose and mm-hmm. the design and reproductive systems and mm-hmm. all the evidence, right? right. It's like, yeah. look, open your eyes. It's obvious that there's a creator. And we just assume sometimes that, that people are just rejecting him. Yeah. When they just, if you, if you haven't been in a home or have a family member or friends yeah. who have told you the truth, you're really not put in a position to yeah. think. Even, yeah. And I challenged him to think of something different. And I remember him looking down after I shared, it was quiet. And then he looked me in the eyes and just, just was like, kind of like that dumbfounded look. He looked me in the eyes and he goes, they called me Tommy because they've, yeah, anyway. Because. Uh, yeah, just because <laughs> some people do. Uh, they said, I've never thought of that. And I, and it opened, that was another huge moment for me mm-hmm. because it made me realize people aren't necessarily rejecting. They yeah. just have never yeah, heard. Just yeah. They've never been and, offered. And I've always prayed about my coaching from a young age. Like God, if it's something that you can use in my life to be on mission with you, then, then do it. I had a kid the other day. Um, and it's just a small thing, but it's like a glimmer of hope, right? Mm. Yeah. That life has purpose. I was, I was talking to the kids and I take the opportunities when I can to just talk about choices and life, Mm -hmm. you know, and one of the kids after uh, just a a talk that we had had in a group of guys Mm -hmm. came up to me and he, and he, Hmm. he in his, in his way just said, um, thank you coach for instilling and teaching us values. Hmm. And I, you know, I, I was like, I know what he's saying and I know, I know what that means in yeah. my life. Yeah. Like hopefully that's opening a door and building a bridge to yeah. a greater, a greater conversation. But yeah. the bridge building is huge because yeah. we live in a, a culture, um, you know, like we close off our homes, even mm-hmm. with our backyards. We want our put privacy, we put our fences yeah. up Yeah, and I like privacy just as much as anybody else, but I also know we're called to know our neighbors and mm-hmm. love our neighbors. Yeah. And it starts like that little Jerusalem at your home. Like, are you even getting yeah. to know your neighbors that you literally live by? Yeah. Do you know their names? Have yeah. you had them over? Do you take them dessert or anything to build bridge yeah. to, to be able to hopefully in the future have greater conversations? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and I like how you said that you, you it was kind of a, an offhanded way of, in, in what you were talking about, but you said that you take opportunities. And I think that's a really important thing is I think so often we, we wait for like the perfect opportunity, yeah. some like golden thing that's really never going to happen, or maybe it happens twice in our life, but that means we missed hundreds upon thousands of opportunities that didn't right. seem so perfect. 
And um, that's just really important, you know, with, with along comes prayer, it becomes not only like the change of heart where we see through God's eyes and have God's heart, but it also is like, it empowers us for boldness. I mean, it's one of the things yeah. they prayed about in Acts is like, God, give us boldness so we may keep preaching right. and, um, and praying for opportunity that like, you know, it's been said that, you know, you have more, you have a lot more coincidences when you pray about <laughs> when you pray for things and, you know, uh, thinking of all the many coincidences you've had, or even just opportunities that were maybe more perfect than others. Like you, you have st- times where you just talk to the whole team, but like that kid where he was the only one down in the hot tub, yeah. like what are the chances of that, that they're all in a hotel together and there's only one kid ready for the hot yeah. tub? Like, and I'm not saying that was, you know, the stars aligning some miraculous way, sure. but it was certainly an opportunity God, right. you know, oh, allowed. Totally. And, yeah. you know, I think um, just having that attitude of I take opportunities. I, I think the the other thing that I notice about you, because I work with you every day. Yes, multiple yeah. times except a day. for Saturdays yeah except for Saturdays <laughs> and the thing that I noticed the most and what I think what you've taught me is just by how you act and how you work is like it's like you always tell me like it tennis isn't really it's it's not really about tennis it's about building relationships and and I it mm-hmm. seems so backwards because you know when we choose to do something it's like okay we're I'm gonna go become an electrician I'm gonna be an electrician and that's kind of the identity of of your work but the reality is if we can kind of shift that and say i'm gonna go live my life on mission and if that's the basic if that's our our focus then i can do that you know i i have a skill set here god's kind of leading me i'm gonna be an electrician through that but my goal is to be missional my goal is to build relationships and so you know i reached out to you so I guess I'll just reiterate the story. I think we've probably said this before, but so I was in high school. Tom was my tennis coach, and uh, you know I, I was raised in in into the Christian faith, and you know I'd always gone to church and all these things. And you know as as you get into high school, I was kind of starting to see you know other kids around me and try to find you know where I fit in and all these mm-hmm. different things, and and. Mm. It, it you know it's always a spiritual battlefield you know mm-hmm. what I mean wherever we're at in the world and so I think Tom just quickly keyed in God just kind of put on his heart I was like oh Tom knew I was like Arthur's a Christian he he believes in God and so he was kind of not necessarily different tough. with you yeah different <laughs> he's just different uh, he yelled at me a lot he's no. different no. you're different with a lot of people Tom no I was just straightforward you, yeah with you. and you held me to a higher standard yes. and and so. Long story short, sort of, um, I really connected with Tom, and mm-hmm. you know, I was I was telling him you were about, terrified at first. Well, <laughs> I was, maybe I was upset. Yeah, okay. And uh, and and so then you know we you know four years later I'm a senior mm-hmm. and we built a really great relationship. Um, and I was telling Tom, you know, I, I'm going to go to WSU for college, <laughs> and he was like, "Don't go! I don't want you to go! Don't go!" And, and I'm like, you can live with us. I'm like, no, I'm no. like, why? He's, and he, he just kind of explains like, it's a really dark place over there. And it, it was, you know, I went there and it totally is. But I, I told him, I was like, I just feel like this is where I feel God's calling me right now. And, and I just have to have faith in that. And, and you got to trust that too. And, and so after, you know, WSU goes by, I still have my faith. I'm thinking, mm-hmm. ha ha shove that in Tom's face and tell him I still have my faith. Yeah. And, and so after college, I, I and it made him, me smile. So you yeah. worked here just to spite him. I want to say, I, I want to clarify something because for all of you WSU fans, for me hearing that it's a dark place, let me, let me explain a little. Okay. I was only going based on my personal experiences and seeing lives that, uh, from some people that were, uh, didn't turn out so great. Yeah. And, I just, it was just simply that. It's yeah. not that I think it's darker than any other school, <laughs> but I was, I just was speaking from my yeah. own experience. Yeah. Well, and, and so, and you knew me, but look at you Yeah, here. So, you're working at Calvary Chapel yeah, and you went through WSU. So it, praise the Lord. It, amen. So, so I gave him a <laughs> call Cooks. after I graduated and, <laughs> and I, I came up to him and I, and I thought, you know, I'll, I'll tell him how it is. And, you know, I'm moving back to Olympia <laughs> tell him how it is. And, uh, and I, I at this point, my tennis, my love for tennis has only like exponentially gone up. I, I, I worked in tennis at WSU and I just, I kept going with it and I, I loved it. So I was like, I want to, you know, I want to help coach 
high school if I can. And so I, I reached out to Tom and I got connected. I started kind of volunteering and even it's funny because even he was like, oh yeah, you can help coach tennis. But he's like, oh, can you also help, you know, with my youth camp that I'm putting on in <laughs> summer? And, <laughs> and so it's like, you know, and give an inch, take a mile. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> and so, you know, that's how I got connected to Calvary Chapel. That's how I got connected to, to this church and, and, that's also how I started realizing and seeing how Tom worked as a coach because he'd do things. And I'd, I'd first, I'd be kind of perplexed. Like, why, like, why are we focusing on this right now? Like mm-hmm. those backhands are not good. We need to, we need to work on those. <laughs> yeah. And it just, over time, he just really showed me that like this, it's not about tennis, even though it's, you know, it's about relationships, but I think there's some level of success in whatever sport it is, whether it's tennis or, or whatever it is, or even just a workplace, and when you have these good relationships, people tend to do better and do well. But it's for Tom is it's like this isn't the his goal for coaching. I know isn't to coach tennis. Mm-hmm. It's it's to be just the conduit exactly. Mm-hmm. And so that is so powerful, and we can do that anywhere. Yeah, I know this is kind of going way off topic no, of, of prayer, but. I think within that, though, we have to constantly be praying for that focus to remain the focus yeah. and not for us not to get caught up in driving to work every day, going to work, and then I'm coming home. And then it's like, well, where can I be missional? It's like mm-hmm. your life. Well, and I think your story is a cool one because I know you've done this with many other kids. It's not just Arthur. Mm-hmm. But sometimes we can look at the Great Commission and um, look at it exclusively. Um, but we're called to a commission where we uh, go and evangelize the world. We, we plant seeds. We share the gospel. But we're also called to build up the church. We're called to disciple. We're called to raise up. We're called to equip. We're called to um, you know send out. And sometimes we can look at these things like they're exclusive, like yeah. you're, you're in one mode or the other. And that's not the case. Like it would be so easy. And I, I know people have been in those kind of situations where... I started doing this thing because I'm going to evangelize. And so they totally just ignore those who are already saved because they're like, I'm not here for them. I'm here for this. And it's like, can you be here for both? Mm-hmm. Like you're a holistic person. God wants to use you holistically. And, um, you know, you being open to, okay, well, I'm going to evangelize those who are unsaved, but I'm also going to build up and encourage and equip those who are saved. And um, I think that's a really important thing when we talk about living on mission, Um the focus is obviously towards evangelism as we're talking about the great commission and we're talking about going out to the lost, but that doesn't exclude the other parts of our calling. And it doesn't mean, okay, well when you do tennis, you do this. And when you're at the church, you do this. Um, it'd be a real shame if at the church, you didn't have a heart for evangelism for those who come in and don't know Jesus. Cause so many people come to the doors of the church. Don't know, not knowing Jesus. Um, but also be a shame if you go to this evangelistic intentional thing of doing tennis or doing outreaches and ignored those who already knew Jesus. And so it, it makes life more complicated. Right. <laughs> and it, it definitely keeps us uh, all the more having to rely on him for, for guidance and all the various types of relationships. Yeah. But it's just important to mention that God has, God has value in all those things. He doesn't just call us to something as if that's the only thing we're there for. Yes. yes. You know, and I think you and, and others like you and, and uh, that Tom is, uh, you know, raised up through tennis and, and through this specifically outreach thing that you were sent to do. Um, it, sh- it just reminds us of that dichotomy that we have multiple yeah. things that we're called to do. Well, and then going back to your, your original story, just about how you got involved with young life and, and stuff. So, you know, we've talked about how God changed us, you know, changes us. He directs us, kind of directed you in that area uh, but God also em- empowers us, and and we need to pray for that. But how did that look like for you once you got involved with Young Life? Because mm-hmm. Young Life's a pretty crazy thing, and it's a lot yeah. of work and energy. Yeah. So so energy. what was that like when you when you went to that meeting and you're like, okay, you looked at you know your wife and said, mm, this is it. Yeah. This is what we're supposed well, to do. Well, it's really simple for me. Is I've just <laughs> always operated under if God's calling me to something and I see His leading in it. He will equip me with everything that's necessary mm-hmm. necessary to do it. Yeah, and so that's confidence and just trusting that He's going to give you everything. He's not going to make you do something and then not give you what you need. Mm-hmm. And that's why, obviously, having God's Word in your heart um, is is the most powerful tool we have as believers to be able to share the gospel because mm-hmm. it's that that changes people. It's not mm-hmm. me. It's the Lord. Yeah, and the when the Word goes in it's doesn't return void and they may not 
decide right away, but, Mm -hmm. but it certainly can never leave their mind. Yeah. And so, you know, it's, I've always likened it to a body of water Mm -hmm. outreach or being on mission with Jesus is like a body of water. And, and if, if your body of water has no outlet, then it's going to be stagnant Mm -hmm. and stale, but the outlet living on mission and Mm -hmm. pouring into people's lives and just building bridges with people and actually being involved in caring for others. It's providing and it's exciting. Uh, It provides an excitement in life. And I believe that that, that life comes from being on mission Mm -hmm. and, and sharing the heart of Jesus and, and, and seeking and saving the lost and being a part of that. You know, I told you that I've taught many, many lessons here within the walls of Calvary chapel over the years. And it's so cool. Like I, I wouldn't trade it for anything. I love it. But when I got involved with outreach, um, every time I would share a message with kids that have never heard and I would lay down on my pillow at night, there was that there was a different joy Hmm. and I, and I always wondered why, but I, I was laying there one night and I was thinking that's because you're on mission with Jesus's mission. Mm -hmm. Maturing the saints is huge. It's really important, but it should be to equip them to do what God's called me to do and and everybody to do. Mm -hmm. And that's to go out on mission and share his heart, you know, why he came to this earth to Mm -hmm. can save the lost. So I remember one time we had probably 30 kids in our living room sitting for a young life night. And I taught on, the topic of sin and help them to, because sin can be just such a, a negative word to people, but right. they, unless yeah. you take the time to unpack it and show them what makes you a sinner, mm-hmm. because if you take the time and actually, instead of just calling someone a sinner, yeah. you help them to see how really what it is, is we just fall short of the glory of God. Mm-hmm. It's not that I'm better than you or you're better than me. It's just every one of us fall short of God's glorious standard. Yeah. So, you know, there was a progression of talks, you you know, over, over the months with young life. And I left them with really bad news (laughs) and like, we're a sinner deserving of death to be separated from God forever, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's, it kind of was a somber moment, you know, and, and all the kids were listening because they, they want to know truth Yeah, and they may not know it, Yeah, but when you speak truth to them, you can hear a pin drop. Mm -hmm. And I remember leaving them with this, we're separated from God because of our sins and it's bad news, Mm -hmm. you know? And I remember this little girl was sitting in the, in the chair right here next to me and everybody was like, (laughs) like, ah, okay, let's talk about something different or, you know, (laughs) something happy. This little girl kind of slowly raised her hand like this. And she looked at me and she goes, and this is a girl that's never been in church. She, mm-hmm. she raised her hand and, and just, she just said to me, is there anything that can be done about this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and man. I was like, <clears throat> right on, you know, like that's what, that's what this is all about is yeah. being able to speak truth into lives, letting it have its effect in people's lives. And if you, if you do it right and you do it biblically, mm-hmm the good news will make sense. Yeah. And it's, but you have to take the time to help people to understand, like, you know, not not that you're just a sinner, but what makes you a sinner? Yeah. And I think that it's really important to be equipped to be able to share what that looks like and how that is in each life. And I think it's important to note too, it's like, if we're feeling convicted and like, it's the door it can be open like it's it's there for us we we have to just pray and we just Mm -hmm. have to ask and god will provide and i think um i think in my life i i'm on like a journey of i was telling travis like when so in a previous podcast we talked about how god uses rocks and (laughs) and what that means and it's basically you know i'm thinking about um as as God does a, as God does a work, you know, we're to remember. And he, you know, he called the the Israelites, you know, and his people, and he performed a miracle to them. And he said, "Okay, now that you've crossed this river, you know, build a a, a rock 
remember what, what, it. Yeah, so what, yeah, me- memory Ebenezer. stones. Yeah, yeah, and and to remember what I provide, like how I provided for you. And I was telling Travis the other day, I was like, I like I'm ready to like build some rocks. Like I I'm excited, almost more excited to to build those memories of God's provisions than I am just about having been provided something. And, and, you know, he was telling me, it's like, well, you know, you got to be ready then for, you know, to, to suffer. Cause you know, that's mm-hmm. how God provides. Sometimes we have to be at our, at our absolute need. And that isn't always a happy place. And it's so true as we go out and do these things, it's not, it's not like we're, like when we live life on mission, it's not going to be this rainbow and daisies and happy all the time. Like clean cut, it's, straightforward. Yeah, it's it's going to be difficult. It's going to be challenging. And we're not going to know what to do and how to do it. And I think that's where prayer is like absolutely a necessity in these things. And it's so easy to, when things are going well, to kind of for, you know forget that you know, maybe we should pray about certain things, but Mm -hmm. I think it's those moments when things aren't going well and we have to pray. Like if you get, like, let's just say you have your young life and you go from 30 kids one month to 150 kids. And you're, there's going to be some challenges and difficulties there and praying through. We're actually facing that right now. Really? Yeah, it's good. (laughs) That's we had for our first young life club this year, Mm -hmm. we had 90 kids show up and then that this last Friday, we had 115. So we had to find another uh, space yeah. to ha- hold it in because we can't hold all the kids. So yeah. it's a wonderful thing. And the kids want, they yeah. want to be there. They want to know. Truth. Yeah, that's awesome. But you have to pray through yeah. the challenges right. and you have to trust that God's going to provide. Um, mm. Travis, well, I- it was like, it was like you said at the beginning of kind of that story, you mentioned how you went in knowing you had to rely on God and knowing that if he calls and he's going to, you know, provide the ability and provide the, you know, capacity and, and that he will ultimately work. And I think prayer ultimately points to that where it's like, you know, when we pray, we're essentially admitting that we don't have something that we need. Right. You know, if we just go out and do it, it's very easy to at least appear like, well, they have it together. They're doing the thing. But when mm-hmm. you pray, um, you really are admitting like publicly, like in a sense, like in your posture, in yeah. your, in the fact you're asking and like that we need something that we don't have on our own. Yep. Yeah. It's yeah. so true. Travis, I'm, I know you have some stories. Uh, I'm thinking about when you, you know, moved to Florida and we're basically just building a church there. What, where were some, what, what, what's a story that you can tell us that where you had to pray and had to just trust that the Lord was going to provide in whatever it might be. I know you have some stories. Um, well, one that, um, you know, in general, people are always closed off. We live in the United States right. where people tend to be really closed off. And so we would oftentimes pray for opportunity. And um, uh, we consistently saw that when we prayed for opportunity, God sent opportunities, um, whether that be in the, the form of people literally coming up and being like, I know I need help and I know I need something other than myself. What do you got? (laughs) Um, That's easy. So yeah. Um, Sometimes in the form of, uh, you know, homeless people asking for money and um, because of the the drug addicted area we were in, um, our policy was never gave cash. We'd walk them to a store or a place to buy them a sandwich or a coffee or whatever. Um, And that opened opportunities. Totally. And um, it was, you know, there's so many times where you, you pray and you wonder if you're being heard and stuff and, and things, but I'll never forget how we, we kept praying for opportunity and we go on nightly walks, Alicia and I, um, hmm. and, uh, and with our, our two boys when we eventually had them <clears throat> and, um, you know, we'd oftentimes pray for opportunity, but, um, we also were pretty financially strapped. And so after a while of almost nightly having uh, a homeless person or someone ask us for money, not even the same person, it was just, it was odd how it was as if they all just saw us and thought that's someone who might give me money. Um, and just, we got to share the gospel with every single one until it was like, okay, God, we, we legitimately feel like we can't afford this anymore. Like we're struggling to pay rent. Can you like not send someone? And I feel terrible. That I prayed that, but I was <laughs> honestly concerned financially and no one asked. Um, hmm. It felt like Elisha where he prayed for no rain and suddenly it was just dry. Wow. And um, after a couple of weeks we were like, okay, we're okay again. God, please send opportunity. And that same night people started asking again. And it just, you know, 
rarely is prayer so like you know uh, at least for me i know tom has many stories yeah. where he literally is like oh god if if this and then it happens you're just like dang that's that's insane but that yeah. was one of those times where it was just like it was so immediate and so clear that it was like oh you want opportunities to minister to people i will give them to you yeah and oh you you don't <laughs> and not to say we didn't we didn't share the gospel with people during that time but it was just funny how um you know, we specifically asked how we, we can't have people asking for money right now. And he stopped. And then we asked again a couple weeks later and he started again. <laughs> and it doesn't always work like that. Yeah. I, feel, I would say it rarely works like that, but it always works like when you're open and available and you ask, um, God is working. Yeah. So, yes, I think this is, um, this has been a really great conversation starter. I think it's been a great conversation starter in talking about, you know when we when we discuss living life on mission start this before we do anything let's let's pray let's pray for god to change us to direct us to empower us and and i think before we close out i want to ask um we have just kind of a, a question we wrote in our notes and it's for you and it's for you it's for anybody um <laughs> anyone th- that question is you know what's one or two specific things um what yeah what is one or two specific things that would encourage others in in living missionally like what are two things that that one or two things that you can say that that would encourage others to to just go out and and live missionally do you want to start or you want me to (laughs) either way go ahead sure um i guess kind of like how we started just like pray for change um pray for change in your own heart because if you go out in your own strength, you'll be unsuccessful, unfulfilled, and um, you're gonna you're gonna end up coming back to the place where you're, you're praying anyway. So just start there. Yeah. Um, just start with prayer. Ask for um, you know God to light a fire in your heart. Ask for direction. Ask for passion. Ask for God's blessing and spirit and working. Um, the other thing I'd say, and this is a general rule, is like doing community. Like obviously, mm. there's some context where it's like you had to go and and be a tennis coach. It's not like you could just bring other people to be tennis coaches. Um, But you have people surrounding your life who are also living on mission. And I think that's really important, whether you're doing the actual thing together or you just have people around you who are encouraging you. Mm, It's not like you went to a tennis coach and no one knew. Um, I'm sure you talked to other people and they knew you were doing that and they were able to be encouraging in you doing that. And um, that encouraged them. Like you're not doing this in isolation, basically like be an encouragement to others by living on mission, them seeing that and them being encouraged and wanting to do that more and vice versa, you know, just do this in community. That's good. I would say two things. Number one would be know who you are and know who God made you Hmm. and be the person God made you and know that he has purpose for you. That's good. Cause I did not want to be a tennis coach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to be everybody else. Um, but, but you do need to know that you're God's special creation and he puts you on earth for a time like this. Yeah. He mm-hmm. knows when you were going to be born. He knows your neighbors. He knows the things that you're involved in and how mm-hmm. he's made you. So be faithful to who you are and don't be anybody else. But, but, but remember to be faithful to how God made you and know that you have purpose. Mm-hmm. The second would be to start small and to, when you, uh, it's, it's that old hymn. I, it's called, uh, be thou my vision. Uh-huh. Right. Mm-hmm. I would say an important prayer to ask every morning would be just to ask God for his eyes, mm-hmm. for your eyes to be his eyes, because he came seeking, right? And that mm-hmm. takes vision. And so he saw people and he loved people. Yeah. And so to ask for his eyes and ask for his heart, because the only reason he went to people was because he loved people. Yeah. yeah. So it starts in the heart of, do I love people? And if not, be honest mm-hmm. with God and say, wow, maybe I don't. Yeah. And, but please, please do heart surgery on me and, yeah. and make my heart right. Because otherwise your vision's going to be blurred. Yeah. But if you have Jesus's heart in you, you'll be on mission and you'll care about the things that he cares yeah. about and you'll just be on ask his mission, him, right? His mission. Yeah. And just ask him to, to give you his eyes so that when you go about your business every day, that you see people and they matter mm-hmm. and that coupled with that you have purpose then you'll be a good steward to those people around you and just get to know people and build bridges and, 
and and it starts there. That's yeah. that's what I would say. Yeah. Oh. That's that's great. Thank you so much for coming on and, and sure. being willing to, to share pleasure. some of your stories and um, if you yeah, I I encourage those who know Tom, just ask for ask a story. For a story. He's got <laughs> plenty. Um, thank you so much for listening and watching. Um, and thank you for joining us each month and each week as we, you know, really dive deeper into some of these more um, some of these topics that we don't get to cover all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, we just want to remind you that all of all of this this podcast is is only just a part of a bigger project that we're doing, um, which is the Follow Project. Um, and we have a page on our website that's filled with all of these resources. And so every time we cover a specific topic each month, we have a page dedicated to to where you can hear and listen to the sermon that was preached, to mm-hmm. the podcast episodes, as well as a bunch of other resources. Um, and so. Travis is, is really been putting a lot of effort into building up these resource pages. And so we just encourage you, um, whether you're listening to this the day it came out or five years from when it was recorded, uh, all of these resources will be on our website. Um, it's on the follow page. What, what's the uh, Calvary, calvarioli.com slash follow. follow. Um, and so that's where you can find all of these resources. And we encourage you to, to share it with others. Um, uh, and and really, this is a conversation starter. These podcasts aren't aren't designed just for you to listen, but they're for you to listen and then engage. And that's really our heart behind it. So, thank you so much, and uh, we look forward to to being here next week with you. And I think we're going to be um, talking to uh, Phil, Phil Prieto. Prieto, who yes. is the you know the guy who runs uh, City Gates Ministries, which is a really cool uh, ministry. And we're going to be talking about local missions and living life on mission locally. So uh, join us for that. And uh, as always, God bless.